Is that too bright? Should I close the... Ow! God! I feel like this has happened before. <laughs> it's doing it, I guess. I went to look over the thing that was getting you and it got me. Yeah, it's okay. It'll be gone soon. It's not the worst. It'll be gone been. soon. That's right. <sighs> like everything. I'm Hank Green. I'm famous on the internet. I'm his wife, Catherine. My eye is twitching. Together, we're about to take a look back at the last week in our lives and the world by reading, discussing, and critiquing my tweets. Welcome to Delete Delete This. This. When I was growing up, I didn't realize that zits hurt. Like when I saw other people had zits. Oh, yeah. Because it it was only discussed as like a beauty or like a looks problem. And I felt deeply betrayed when I found out that they were painful. (laughs) Definitely a thing that should not be allowed. But yeah, a lot of it is very painful. Yeah. No one ever mentions that about them. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about how like we have this like painful face infection. We're only like, oh, my my poor pimple. It makes me now I can't have the most beautiful face on prom night. Yeah. I'm Fred Savage. No, also... Ow, it hurts to move my face. Yeah, and then sometimes they happen like on the very sensitive parts of your nose. I always get nose zits. Always. Hank's just one one nose zit after another. Maybe you should keep your fingers out of there. What's happening? Actually, my draft tweet this week is about this very thing. So we'll save it for later. Oh, great. I thought it was about (laughs) keeping your fingers out of your nose. A little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. Catherine, we begin, as always, with my top tweets from five years ago this week. Oh. One of them is a quote from you. Sweet. You want to read your what you said that I tweeted? <laughs> pop, pop, popcorn. Wait, what did I say? No. Pop, popcorn. The snack food of magnitude. Oh, pop, pop, pop. Wow, okay. That, I got there eventually. But <laughs> I still don't get it. Yeah, there's a couple of things going on there. So do you remember the show Community? Yes. Do you remember there was a character in oh. the show Community called Magnitude? Yeah. Do you remember that the Magnitude's catchphrase was pop, pop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd forgotten until now. Oh, that's wonderful. So, uh, it's a joke I made. <laughs> So glad I didn't take credit for that. <laughs> oh, because it, it was a near thing. I I very easily could have. Oh, Amazing. Yeah. Oh, magnitude. <laughs> I forgot about magnitude. Pop, pop. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that I didn't actually get that joke. I just. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get it until. Yeah, until yeah, it, we I, said I, it. I put it together. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad that that was all still in your brain. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, th- Weird. Sadly, this was that wasn't the top tweet of the week. The top tweet of that week was I was quoted in the Wall Street Journal today saying that paywalls are bad. I would share it, but it's behind a paywall. Oh my god. <laughs> Not well, only was, that is the kind of stuff that Twitter loves. I, do, I love it. And actually, that was the top tweet of 2013 so far. Wow. So that is the. Many things happened this week, Catherine. What is this week, even? Um, and I thought that we were going to come in to delete this, and I was going to be like, well, I didn't tweet a lot this week, so there's not much to talk about. Turns out, I tweet a ton. I tweet so much, Catherine. Yeah, you tweet so much, you forget about it. So on May 3rd, which is pr- before this week began, YouTube, actually, when I was in New York, announced their new slate of originals. Um, and the, So here's some of the names from the yeah. new, new crop of YouTube originals. All those, all those famous YouTubers Will on Smith, that list. Demi Lovato, uh, LeBron James. So there was a lot of whining about this. I wouldn't. Whining is probably the wrong word. There was a lot of a hubbub that Commentary. occurred. Yes, because because there were no YouTubers on this list. And I said, I hear the complaints. YouTube should have systems that enable creation for YouTubers, but I'm not convinced that the big budget originals actually do that very well. Maybe smaller. Grants is what YouTube should be doing for the creator community. And I believe this. And I think that that's something that we should talk about more because that's how a lot of, that's how Phil DeFranco's studio got started. It's how Mythical Entertainment got started. It's how Fine Brothers Entertainment got started. It's how my company got started. It frustrates me that like these originals are, this is inside YouTube. Sorry, everybody. But these originals are designed to basically have a big budget thing happen for, and, and like it doesn't, think at all about what 
a YouTube channel is and how a YouTube channel is different from a TV show. I'm not sure why YouTube wants to not be what it is, but it's possible that it's just because they don't understand what it is. And I think that that's understandable because it's not like anything else. But if they keep trying to trying to turn the wheel so that it feels more like something people are willing to pay for, I think that we end up in a bad spot. Yeah, well, I don't think, I mean, if you want to make TV, there's lots of places to do that. Too many, one might say. Most of them. Yeah. All the other places are, are the places to make TV. You but can't, there's only one YouTube. You can't compete on TV right now. Game of Thrones. Yeah. There's AMC. Is there still Game of Thrones? Yes, it's coming back for a uh, final part of the final season. They split the last season in two because they wanted to murder people's souls. Boy, I'm really excited. <laughs> All right. Also this week, Hawaii. Holy crap. Yeah. That was that seems like it was a long time ago, but it was not. And I said Hawaii is freaking next level. The inside is too close to the outside. <laughs> It's too much, too much inside in there. <laughs> that was a very good time lapse of this <clears throat> yeah. lava flow consuming a car. Oof. Um, and so somebody doesn't have a car anymore. And I've been trying to follow some uh, volcanologists some on Twitter. People don't have houses anymore. Because, of course, yes. Yeah. It's not, it's not a fun thing. Um, because there are a lot of good volcanologists and geologists on Twitter and, and, that's what I feel like I should be doing with Twitter more, is following people who are experts in their fields, rather than people who are experts in yelling at each other. Yes. And then they, they do sometimes yell at, e at each other, but then it's about geology. <laughs> oh, God, that's cool. It's a monster. It's a terrible monster. It's a fire. Yeah, and these fissures are still opening Magma up. Monster. So we did an episode of SciShow on, on the Kilauea eruption and how Kilauea erupts, which is different from how other volcanoes erupt. Oh, so, see? There's always more to learn. The rock is a different density. The, the temperature inside is different. And so instead of exploding, which other volcanoes will do, it just oozes constantly. Mm. And by constantly, we mean like regularly. Right. Geologically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not like once every 10,000 years, but once every 10 this is a thing that people are aware of. Yeah. That happens. Right. And it doesn't er it doesn't always erupt. So it has that like sort of cone at the yeah, top, but it right. doesn't always erupt from the cone. Right. It often erupts from the side. And these <sighs> things that do this are called shield volcanoes, I think. Mm, um, that sounds like a thing. Yeah. And so you don't know. And so this weird thing happened where suddenly the lava lake inside of the main cone, <laughs> crater, <laughs> co cone crater, sure. went way, way up. And they were like, oh, it's going way, what, what, something's going to happen. And then it suddenly just dropped. Yeah. And there was nothing left in the cone. And they were like, where did all the magma go? And then it was like, I'm at your house. Here I am. <laughs> this has been a very informative episode of Delete This so far. Hank, Hank has lots to talk about. And I am sleepy. <laughs> yeah, we had a long weekend. We'll it's... probably talk about it some. Okay. So on What's May next? 7th, this is my top tweet of the week. Wow. Somehow, I didn't. so I said it's not it, very high. Is why? Yeah, it just it's, didn't go very big. Yeah, I mean it's surprisingly big for what the tweet is. Yeah, Hearing people gotta... blame YouTube for ads showing up in the middle of videos, creators choose to do this. It's not something that YouTube automatically does. They give us the tool to do it, but we're the ones who decide whether and when to do mid rolls. And I remember even back in the days when pre rolls first started, that people would be like, "Oh, YouTube is running ads on everything now," and I was like, "Well, you can choose like as a creator." It's it's a tool that they give us, and we choose to use that tool. Yeah, you have to like click that button when you upload a video. Yeah, you say, "Do I want to run pre pre rolls on this? Yeah, on this video? Yes, I would like to. Thank you. I would I like, like my, money. Money I would is like good. my fractions of cents. Yeah, every time somebody watches this video. And sometimes, so with mid rolls, people don't even oftentimes like place them in logical places. No, it is like, pop, pop, pop. and I think that kind of. And I feel like a bit like kind of anti-creator for doing this, but it's reality. I think sometimes people are like, well, my viewers are just going to assume that YouTube did this, so I don't need to do it well. Or maybe they, just, so, they don't understand how... Maybe they don't know how to place how, them. How it works, it's yeah. It's pretty clear. Or maybe they just don't think people care, or maybe it doesn't... Yeah. But I mean, when we do mid-rolls, we try to create a space for them. We do this on SciShow some, on our longer episodes. We try to create a spot where a mid-roll will go, and then... We will schedule it to go there. I feel like we should own this and say, like, if we're going to do this, we should probably do it in a way 
that like if our audience knew that we were doing it, they wouldn't be like, why are you doing that right. so badly? Yeah. So it's one thing to say like, yeah, there's going to there's gonna be a 30 minute long video and there's going to be three ads in it, which seems like a lot for YouTube, but is to be clear, none compared to TV, but do try and make them happen not in the middle of a word. That that happens to me sometimes and I'm like, what the balls yeah. has just... I feel like some of some of the shows I watch, I wish there were mid-rolls because I'm like, it makes sense. This is a half an hour long program. Mm-hmm. Like, Welcome to the Basement. Give Why not a, have mid-rolls? I'd watch that. Maybe they're just against it. Yeah. Um, I disagree with that being your most, most tweet of the week, though, because it definitely does not have the most engagement. No, no. I mean, I do it by likes. I know. The top but tweet like, of the week. You got 34,000 votes. Sure. On, polls are very different. And that's crazy. That's crazy that I got that many votes in that poll. Whoa. That's, that's a lot of votes. It's a lot of votes. I, I Also, I disagree with them. You disagree with them? So I did my, I want to know what you think. I, yep. I did a poll for which one of these three pictures is going to be my author photo. Mm-hmm. It's in It's in the delete this show notes, so I delete this pod. I think, I mean, they're all fine choices. Mm-hmm. That one just doesn't look as much like you as the other two to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it's not about what I look like, Catherine. It's about whether that's going to help somebody buy a book. All right. Sure. Here I am, attractive denim man. Um. Yeah, a-, a was my pick. Yeah, I like A. And I put C in because I was like, I look like me. Yeah, that I look one. like the most friendly, approachable version of me. Yeah, that looks like Hank. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people that also looks said... Like you said that uh, they would pick B if it was color. So I actually got the, the oh. color version. I don't like the cropping we're gonna do. necessarily of it either. Yeah, we're going to recrop it too. Yeah, so there's right. less headspace. Yeah. So that's my author photo now. Thanks everybody for picking for me because it was really hard. Yeah, it, you took a lot of good ones. There are a lot, yeah. Thank you, Ash. Uh, marsupial pudding. Marsupial pudding, is that right? But there's no I in pudding. May 7th. Does Stu sell Stu or does Sue sell? I couldn't do it. Uh, right? It's an innocuous thing to read, but try to say it out loud. Why were we talking about this? This was a conversation that you and I had. My God, I can't. I still can't do it. Can't even see it. Can't even look at this. Does Stu sell Stu or does Sue sell Stu? Oof. And when I'm reading it, it's easier. But when I just try to do it with my brain. Stu sells. Nope. Nope. Does Stu sell? Nope. Does nope. Stu sell Stu or does Sue sell Stu? I think it was Sue. So oh boy. Oof. I think it was saying, does Stu sell Stu? Uh, so we were listening to something. A podcast. Yeah. I'm assuming. And someone was talking about soup or stew or s- right. stew. Right. Yeah. Soup. The difference between stew, stew and, and soup. soup. Or, or some, something. Yeah. That is what happened. Something like that. And then we were like, does Sue sell Sue? Does Stu sell Stu? And it like became a thing in our, like, it was like, that doesn't sound like words. Yeah. Does Stu sell Stu? Just for like five, ten does minutes, we were both like, Stu sells, 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 enjoyment that's our life and then i tweeted that boop and it did fine (laughs) craig who i was just hanging out with at at creator summit says stew 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 at sue's to prove to stew that stew stew is new but stew sue sue for sue stew causes ezekiel Found flu in Stu's Sue. Sue's Stu. Moral of the story is Ezekiel is a snitch and prick. My God. That's good. I don't know who Craig is. He's a gamer, a YouTube game guy. Ugh. I believe he does the games. Like a lot of people had extra. I don't know what you're talking about. What is it called? Uh, the Nemini Limerick. It's not a, it's a tongue twister. Tongue twister. Good God. Oh. Thanks, uh, thanks for playing. <laughs> thanks for playing with us. Thanks for, thanks for playing. Did you... Listen to Binti, the Nnedi Okorafor book? No. I thought I thought that I saw that she would listen to it. I this. think I downloaded it, but I did not. I have not listened to it yet. Super, super good. Which one is it? It's a science fiction book about a girl from a planet and her, her like, group of people. They're, like, super technologically savvy, but they're also very sort of, like, tied to the location and their ancestry. And one of them 
gets into like space academy. Okay. Like like super exclusive space college. Uh-huh. And uh and doesn't tell anyone and then just like one day is like I'm going to I'm going to go by everybody. Oh. And then like adventures very fast. And the first one's a novella and it's so good. So there was a Saturday Night Live sketch where um Donald Glover uh, is like where are all the black people in Star Wars? But then now this said where are all the black people in space, which is different. And then Nnedi Okorafor said, "Here uh, they are. Here you go. There's a bunch. There's a lot of very good yeah. science fiction that has lot, lots of people who are not white in it, and they very rarely get made into movies for whatever reason. Strange. Well, just just because they want to keep putting Scarlett Johansson in movies, and they're like, well, what could what else could we what put we her? Got- who else could she be?" In this yeah. movie. Oh, we got a few more Chris's. Can we <laughs> can we shoehorn these Chris's into a few more movies? I mean, a Binti movie would be so good and amazing. But, but let's keep let's keep hiring the Chris's instead. Well. Bring back the Chris's, guys. The, the Chris's sell the, the tickets, I guess. I'm not I saying guess. I have anything against the Chris's, but like I'm done. Uh, you know, I've seen them you enough. You are particularly Somebody done else. with Chris Pine. I am done with Chris Pine. I just don't think it's fair to be like Captain Kirk and somebody else. <laughs> like, you're Captain Kirk. <laughs> just That's yeah. who you are now. You should sign up and be like, I'm done. This is it. I get to be, like, because that's, I mean, what else was Captain Kirk in when Captain Kirk was the guy whose name I shouldn't be forgetting? Chip, chips. Chips? William Shatner. He was in Chips? Uh, He was some sort of. T.J. Hooker. T.J. Hooker. Was that after? It was after. Yes. Yeah. He's Captain Kirk. It's weird, but I get it. It's too much. I understand what you mean. I had a similar feeling when J.J. Abrams was first signed on to direct a Star Wars movie. Mm. And he said, I've like, this is so like, I didn't want to say yes, because this is so much pressure to contribute to such a uh, beloved and uh and like storied franchise and i was like yeah but star trek you were like whatever i don't care blah 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 those star trek ones though bam bam bloom yeah, yeah. let's rewrite the entire canon none of it none of it happened anymore yeah, ex- explode it <sighs> explode it all blow it all up boo boo jj abrams boo chris fine take your take your responsibility seriously become captain kirk and then never do anything again <laughs> that's your job now you got that one you got that one uh, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe it's like, you did it. You got, you succeeded. Yeah. Like, give somebody else a turn. No, that's not how, yeah, that's really, really, really not how it works. It's so interesting. Like, it's, I, I'm not saying this shouldn't be how it works. No, I, yeah. yeah. I just, but that's how I feel. I'm fasting a bit right now, May 8th. And the main symptom is that I have no idea if something is confusing if or, or if I am just confused. Also, if you want to know why I'm fasting, I'm not going to tell you because it's embarrassing butt stuff. See, that was Tuesday. That was Tuesday? Yeah. You're right. We were trying to figure out how long I've been fasting. I, I guess mean, I did I make it. I said it was at least Monday. I mostly did it. Yeah. yeah. I feel much better now. Yeah, that's right. I feel so much better. Gotta give that colon a rest. Gotta give the colon a rest. So gotta the whole you gotta system. Rest, rest the, yeah, you gotta rest it all. <laughs> rest it up. Yeah, I feel way, way better. Um, and The yeah. end. <laughs> um, and my job is very confusing, I feel like. I often have to make sense of complicated things, either because it's science and what I'm What does communic- this have to do with the fasting? Because I was confused. Oh, okay. Is this confusing... Or am I just hungry? Oh, okay. Right, right. That's the other part of the... Of, of the, the tweet. Of the tweet. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention to that part. Yeah, totally. Um, Sometimes things are just confusing. Yeah, and also like dealing with interpersonal stuff. And there's lots Ooh, of like yeah. moving parts with yep. like taxes sometimes. And I'm like, wait a second. Wait, wait. We're what? talking about taxes. Or it's a C, were, were we an S Corp or a C Corp? I don't know. Which company is this? <laughs> Just, and that is uh, probably that's not a hunger thing. No, probably that's, that's a tax thing. That's just really dumb and confusing. <laughs> oh God! Why? Why? Why do I have to know the difference between an S corp and a C corp? No, I, I don't know. So I don't. Yeah. So that many people don't. So this is the first time I've ever done this. I listened to an audiobook and then I immediately listened to it again. Oh, weird. With Space Opera by Catherine Valenti is so good. Huh. It's amazing. I love it. Whoever's listening to this, you should go. The audiobook is very good. The book book is Whoever also very is good. Whoever's out there. Whoever's out there, go get it now. It will make your life way better. It's just a great story. And it's really fun. It's so 
thoughtfully crafted and every word is so carefully chosen. But uh, I found out that there wasn't a, a wiki for it. And it is quite confusing because there's a lot of different species. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're all different and, but important in important ways. Oh, there wasn't a, like, a specific wiki. Not that for, there wasn't a Wikipedia page. There also it. wasn't a Wikipedia page for it. It's a new book. Oh. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, there to be a Wikipedia a wiki just for it. So you could yeah. be like, here are the different species. Here are the characteristics. Here are the, where they're from. Just a little bit of that. Okay. And so I made one. And then one night you were like, Hank, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you know, just writing writing the Wikipedia page for Goganar Gorkanon's Unkillable Facts. Yep. Because that's the Instead thing that I need to, to be bed. doing right now at 11 o'clock at night uh-huh. when my baby wakes up at 6. <laughs> so, yeah. But I did Feeding create different- that. And I wanted to talk a bit about this drive that I have and how I like and whether it's a good thing to be like to to sort of like once you've lived in something and you love it to go and extend that out in some way. And I really like I oh, like that's very much fandom. Isn't yeah. It? And I really like wikis for this specifically because like some people are drawing pictures. Yeah. Some people and that's are like all, yeah, and that is also writing like writing fan fiction. Some people are writing mm-hmm. songs. You're and I have the nonfiction the version yeah, of that. Like, I really want to like, create your... a resource that will be helpful to other people. Yeah, because that's how you're creative. Yeah. Sort of. That's like a lot of where your creativity yeah. And I, I kind of feel like that that was a big part of the early internet and it's kind of faded away a little bit. Mm. And even fandom in general, it feels like it's faded away a little bit as if like... I think it's like still there. Are... It's just underneath yeah. a lot of other stuff. There's so much stuff and it feels yeah. like... Feels like if you make something, it, you might not even get somebody to tell you that they saw it because whoever famous internet person is so used to seeing cool fan art. Mm-hmm. I think that everybody should contribute to wikis. If that sounds like it might be something you're interested in, that's from May third. So yeah, last week I said I really like YouTubers, yeah. and then this person, Bakta, said it would be a really fun sentence with a comma after the comma after the U. So then I tweeted, I really like you, tubers. <laughs> and then that was the whole story. Potatoes. No, there was a... there was a. Yeah, well, yeah, there was a Marge Simpson gif which says, I just think they're neat. I just think they're neat! <laughs> Good Marge Simpson, Catherine. Ah! March, April, May, June. Jason Derulo. <laughs> God. <laughs> I watched this and then spent... The next three days going, Jason Derulo, yep. in my head. Mm-hmm. And sometimes out loud. Yes, it's true. Can confirm. The word Jason is in the months. Sure is. That's neat. Is it? And then, <laughs> and then I put it in my end screen of my vlog for this video, and everybody was very confused. And I think whoever got this... T- but this tweet has over a million likes. It's been watched 16.6 million times. And to yes. be fair, I watched it a bunch of times in a row. Sure. Well, so, it does, like, repeat. It, it's yes. six seconds long. So apparently vines are alive and well. You just don't put them on vine anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. It was just there. Uh-oh. Someone removed their tweet, and now oh, it's not in it, it. I was just reading it. I was just watching it. It's so good, and you hadn't seen it yet, and it's so good. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, how do I find it? I don't know. <laughs> don't look. I'm Googling it. Okay. Okay, here it is. I want to talk about this. Okay. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, you've seen it? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I probably that person posted it. Yeah. Just they just posted it at their profile and they didn't give that person credit and they were like, probably I should take that down. Yeah, not my tweet. That's real cute. It was real cute. It's a cat playing a xylophone. And I said, content is over. We're done. That's it. I do. Sometimes I'm like, okay, we've there's enough stuff in the world now. We've right. achieved it. We've gotten all the content done. But isn't it delightful that there really is? So much more that could can come and should. I think about this be. because of the publishing industry, always out there publishing way, way more books all the time. Yeah. 
And I... Somebody wants to read a different book than any of the books that are already published. And that's not... That is actually true. Yeah. That is a real thing. And Some, and for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. It's not that they they just don't know that the book that they want to read is out there, so they're yeah. writing a different book. That there isn't that book isn't there. Yeah. Writing, I mean, they're people are writing the same book over and over again, for sure also. Like that's that's <laughs> yes. definitely also happening. I like, read a mystery novel once. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> they're all the same. No, they're not. I read a romance novel once. <laughs> well yeah, oh, I don't like this guy. No. I some, do like him now. Most most of them are follow pretty formulaic. Yeah. But um but yeah, but there's other there's other romance novels that aren't like those and somebody wants to write the read those, so Right. And also like you can follow the old formula in a new world. Everything written in the nineties doesn't have smartphones. <laughs> That's true. And everything written in the 80s doesn't have cell phones at all. And so it doesn't fit into this world. And also, like, the way that we understand the world, the way we understand, like, women has yeah. changed. And so it's good to have new stories about those things. Oh, so, defo. Yeah, lots of, lots of good reasons for, for there to be new stories all the time. Yeah. And the excellent side effect of that is that new storytellers get to be professional storytellers. Indeed. I'm glad I live on a hill, May 10th. Yeah. It's been a wild week up in here, Missoula. It has. I mean, there's no lava fissures opening up. There's no lava fissures, and like our home is not in danger and yeah, never has been, and on a hill will not really ever be unless there's another glacial ice age or something. But <laughs> and and also most of Missoula is not, but there's definitely part of Missoula that is under the river. Yeah. Way under. We've got friends who are sandbagging. Swept away. Yeah, people. some people's houses are done. They had to pull some mobile homes out of the river. Natural disasters are weird. And floods are weird because they kind of like... This isn't like a flash flood situation. It's like, goes up and it goes up and it goes up. And so it's sort of like, here comes the disaster. I see it coming. Yep. There's nothing I can do about it. Not like, really. I don't... You know, you could sandbag, but like... Yeah. That, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, we have, like, the levees and dikes that are in place already yep. are are there, so mm-hmm. people are checking them. Right. But, like, that's really all. And it's very not over. No. Of, uh, this is early. <laughs> yeah, it's early in the season, and... <laughs> that, that, um, those mountains still got lots of snow up in there. It, it could go up, up higher than the level it went this week. Um, so Sec- we're all keeping an eye on it. Second and- highest it's been in recorded history. Yeah, yep. highest in a hundred years. Yep. Um, though the highest before that was much higher than this, yes. which is terrifying. Three extra feet of river is yeah is a lot is a lot of extra feet. Um, and it was the um, that was the flood that destroyed the dam, and Milltown. Is, yeah. Oh yeah. And washed all of Butte into into the Milltown Dam site and created that world's largest Superfund site. Right. That was that flood so hopefully that won't happen again well it's i mean most of that's not going on up there anymore so right it will be and the dam's gone so that's good Mm -hmm. (laughs) we've learned a few things in a hundred years uh catherine saved this tweet from me that i didn't put in my my list but well i just think it's really interesting the options that apple (laughs) has suggested for the phrase butterflies in your yes and then it's like would you like to say that you have butterflies in your face? <laughs> or perhaps you would like to say you have butterflies in your mouth. Or perhaps your eyes. It's like, no, there's only one phrase with one body part. Where butterflies are. Where the butterflies are. end up. Why are you suggesting these other body parts? I did it on my uh, Android and it said butterflies in your stomach. It was the, the middle result. It's like, it's like that phone knows what humans sound like and this phone is like just still trying to figure it out you people are so weird where do you put your butterflies sometimes they're in your eyeballs butterfly in In your your eyes eyes. yeah (laughs) that was uh teleprompter the teleprompter software at the studio that's actually not the teleprompter software that is the slate software that we use to mark the episodes i was typing in the name of the episode, which is Butterflies in Your Stomach, our episode of SciShow Psych. You can find all about butterflies in your stomach later when that episode comes out. I don't know when. Just subscribe to the SciShow Psych channel and you'll... It'll happen. 
They'll get it. It'll come right into your subscription box. Except you got to ring that notification bell. Got to ring that notification bell. First. Or go to your subs regularly, which you probably don't anymore, let's be honest. Because you haven't been actively maintaining it. It's too many people. And you don't want to unsubscribe because you feel bad about that. You do feel bad about that. Yeah, that's true. Well, at least I got Catherine on the nose. I mean, I have some subscriptions that I'm just like keeping for... um, Nostalgia, like cute with Chris. It's time for draft tweets from Hank Green. It's Hank's draft tweets, tweets that he wrote and then didn't tweet because they weren't good tweets to tweet. Boop. You know, what if, don't fuck the haters. What if, listen to the haters and then determine on a case by case basis whether their concerns are valid? <laughs> Generally. I don't know. I felt like that might have been a little bit too on the nose. Uh, too subtweety of certain people who say fuck the haters a lot in my timeline mm. who I'm like maybe maybe they maybe someone there maybe maybe they could listen and be a little less uh, a little less bravado going on the, the other yeah just chill just like say you know maybe there's some points maybe, maybe some, some points. points have been made just a few points that you could not all of them but okay. some there's yeah, some no, points sometimes people are making points yeah that are worthwhile I to... like you you're my friend I, we're, we're friends but also there's points that have been made <laughs> yeah you don't get to say that though so but that's not about boogers what remember my draft tweet this week was about boogers you didn't say that you said it was about something about your nose something about we my were nose. talking about sensitive areas right wasn't your draft wasn't some tweet about boogers last week it's possible it was about how when you were a kid you thought if you just kept right. flicking your boogers all over the room eventually your room would fill up with boogers <laughs> yeah apparently Hank thinks about boogers a lot that's what's happening here <laughs> This is what we're just. This is what we're discovering about Hank via this podcast. So I, I also drafted Sheesh. this tweet. When I lived in Florida, I feel like I had nice, kind, respectable little boogers. <laughs> now in Montana, my boogers feel like mineral deposits with deep roots and noticeable mass. <laughs> They're up there. You gotta like prospect for them. I mean, sometimes I have a booger. Wow. And I and then like. The part that I pull out, we're really going is here, guys. Connected Maybe to skip a much forward ten seconds. It's more significant institution. Yeah, you can feel it like coming out of your brain, like yeah. from behind your eyeball. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like wow, Whoa. that one was way up there. Did I just pull out some of my eye? This is like total recall. <laughs> it's all connected, anyway. Maybe you should use the netty more. Maybe. I don't know. I think you need to irrigate your nasal passages They're more. very dry. Yeah. I think you're, what you're discovering about yourself is that you are a dry situation. I'm a dry situation. You have a dry situation, Maybe especially around stop. the head. Should I stop showering? No. No. <laughs> no. That is not the solution. That was a joke. <laughs> I mean, you could stop bathing your entire body. Should I get up a bit today? Oh, what? <laughs> what is she? What are you, what are you interested in getting? What? <laughs> what are you thinking about maybe getting? A bidet. <laughs> I don't know why I had a hard time with that. <laughs> yeah, I think you should get a bidet, but I don't really know how that works. I don't know where to put it. Yeah. We, we should don't... have designed it in. I do. We didn't think about it. I think you can get like, ins- you can you, get yeah. them installed into your toilet. Sometimes sort I'm of. at a friend's house and there's like a thing and I'm yeah. like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, oh it's shooting me in a bit. <laughs> oh, I'm shooting myself in the butt with the same butt shooter that my friend shoots themselves in the butt with. It's clean water. It's not like the butt goes back out. Should we talk more about Hank's personal hygiene, guys? Probably Suggestions not. for Hank's personal nope. hygiene? Hashtag pipples. <laughs> this uh, May 10th, I discovered that if you scroll all the way down to your, your Twitter followers, you see the first people you followed on Twitter. How do I do this? You have to go to your Twitter. How do I do this? <laughs> and then to go to following. How do I do this? And then you scroll for 196. Your top six Unsurprising. are... Unsurprising. T- tell us, Catherine. Uh, my number one is Shane Dawson. Your number one is so. Is it this, 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 yeah. this? Okay, Hank Green. My number two, I Justine. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number two? John Green. My number three, Mitchell Davis. What the heck? What's your number three? Uh, Doctor Noise, Bill Martin. Bill Martin. Yeah. My number four is John Green. 
So he made it into the top six. Family means nothing. <laughs> um, Wheezy Waiter. Tessa Violet. Molly Lewis. Michael Aranda. Michael Aranda. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's Honorable funny. mentions, Charlie McDonald and Maureen Johnson. Oh, good. I'm only following 196 people, though, so it's not right. like quite a... Yeah. Such an endeavor to get all I the way back lot, there. I follow, I follow like 700 people now. I, I was looking. To That's too many see people, if I could prune, Hank. But I can't really. I mm, don't know. I feel I like you know. probably could. I don't know. Well, I could probably prune the people who tweet a lot. Hey, maybe that's, that's the real a, problem. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a new segment. <laughs> who do I unfollow this week? Every week, it's... we unfollow someone. <laughs> May 10th. Is this what my town would be famous for? Ugh. Did you see this? I saw your tweet. I didn't like go to the bar and see it or gas station. Oh, I just assumed. I mean, that's amazing. It is amazing. I love everything about it. <laughs> I love the way that it looks like there's legs, like it's legs. It's but I also like that it's just that thing that everyone knows how to draw when you're a teenager. Uh huh. But it's also school. a dick. But it, yeah, it's got yeah. It's also a it's also a penis. And it's that's really good gas station graffiti, it's man. So good. It's really good. Graffiti. Graffini. That's what they call it when it's just pressed into the paint. It's not even not even written <laughs> with a pen. It's just totally just very with a key. Somebody took their pushed in. somebody took their key just and just fingernail like drew this <laughs> while they were sitting in the toilet. Yeah, trying not to go back into the car with their dad. <laughs> I don't oh, don't like my dad. I'm gonna do a weird dick. I'm gonna <laughs> do gonna a weird a dick weird on this dick. wall. <laughs> I want to know if like that's the thing that kids draw now. Do they draw this S S club? They do. I think they dick? still do. Not the dick, just the S. Okay. I don't think that they do that. I'm sure they still draw the S, but like I was yeah. just wondering if you know now no, the no. kids I, these days. I think that's. I think that's that's. This is a revolution. It this is, is the first it time is it's a ever revolution. <laughs> we can't like claim that it's from here either. I mean that that person could be from anywhere. Yeah. It's a gas station. Yeah. That's, that's where people who are traveling go. Yeah, let's think about gas stations. They're the, the, the port of now. Pop, pop. That's what they says. That's what that's the tagline for a gas station. <laughs> gas stations, the port of now. Pop, pop. <laughs> May 12th. I did, so I did have a gap here, so it was a long period of not tweeting. I have a, th- I have a thing to bring up, too. What? Let's, your profile... Your Twitter profile what? bio. We mentioned that last week, didn't we? I know, but it's still that. Yeah, it's oh, still that. Okay. I think by the t- by the time my book comes out, I'll have changed it. I think that's a good idea. I don't know, man. People constantly are tweeting at me being like, Hank, your Twitter bio is next level. And I love it so much. Okay, well, it's doing something. May 12th. What are your favorite games? So Catherine and I went on a vacation, a little mini vacay up to Flathead Lake with some friends. Who the heck says those phrases? Mini vacay? I don't know. Bridget Jones? Okay, Admiral Akbar. What is that face? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You said I look like a fish. Can you... Are you saying that I look like a fish? <laughs> I'm concerned whether it's a trap. Is it a trap? It's not a trap. What are you talking about? <laughs> Everything's fine. Okay, home star. What's happening? <laughs> and I asked Twitter, what are your favorite games to play at a party that you only need minimal, minimal equipment for? And we didn't even, we had so many like $70 board games. There was no way we were going to play anything but them. And we had a lot of fun playing them. But I am very interested in these games. Things Those like, are the only games that I like. Yeah. I mean, that's not true, but like my favorite games are Foldy Foldy Draw Draw. Yeah. Celebrity. Celebrity. Yeah. Picture for, ranges. For, for parties. Yeah. What do they call it? You know Charades? what? Charades? Yeah. Well, no. Not nah, with. Pictionary? Yeah. I like the games that are like pencil, piece of paper. Pencil, or piece of paper, man. Nothing. Yeah. I like or card deck games of cards. as well. Um, but but I, I almost like, well, but they, it's harder to involve like six people in, the, in a card game. Depends what the card game is, man. Sure, but yes. Yeah. And then Max Temkin, one of the creators of Cards Against Humanity, said, I think the genre you're describing is called folk games. I have a collection of about 50. Always wanted to publish a book of them. And I said, make the book. Can I help? And then he responded, yes, Hank, just spitballing here, but there are ways you could help me make a book. I don't know what that means. There are ways you could help me make a book. (laughs) (laughs) Help me write? Help, Help me publish? 
put me in contact with your editor? Yeah, no, <laughs> like, I'll do any of those things, Max. What are you asking for? I'm not sure. Be obvious next be time. Be more obvious. Because I feel awkward at, like Do, being like, just, I don't know, you are the most successful game designer of the last yeah. 20 years. Just have him DM you. Just be like, okay, DM what do you, me. Okay, DM me. Okay, DM me? Okay, D- yes. Good. Here's an advance. Is that what you want? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully that will happen. Then I played PUBG for the first time. Yeah. Not... Yep, it, that happened. I um, yeah. It was an experience. That went somewhere because I was just yelling the whole time. Yeah. Because apparently that's what you do when you play PUBG, which is why it's such an exciting experience for people to watch and be in the same room of. Yeah. Well, as, the thing is, I very it. I landed and I immediately I had no idea what I was doing and I ran forever and I couldn't find anything so I was just running around my underwear and a guy came up to me and he started shooting me. And I started jumping up and down and punching him. And I punched him like three times before he managed to shoot me enough that I fell over. And then I was on the ground. I had fallen over. And then my teammate, I didn't even know I had a teammate. I didn't know there were teams. Jesus. My teammate showed up, killed that guy. Mike knows nothing re- about this Then game revived me. Started playing. Enough that I could get, like, I got a helmet and I got a backpack. And so I'm running around my underwear with a helmet and my, a backpack. Still no gun. And some bullets. <laughs> And eventually, I managed to heal up, and then me and this guy, Goku, his name was Goku. Yep. He got a car, and I was driving around the car with him, and I shot a couple people. I killed two people. And <laughs> he killed a lot of people, though. He Mostly with the car. He ran over a bunch of people. <laughs> and, and then I got a shotgun, and I got a rifle, and I was able to do, I think, fairly well. I placed 10th. And that's, I, think I mean, that's amazing. Out of 99. And For your first time. Uh, and I don't ever want to play again because I feel like I won't do better than that. <laughs> oh, no. The Vegas. <laughs> the Vegas has struck. The Vegas. You yeah, will never. My Vegas strategy. I will, won once. I'm will. never playing again. Yeah, you will never. You will never play again. Nine hours ago, I tweeted my brain just earnestly thought to itself, a cribbage board is like a physical app. Hey. I was like, it's like one of those apps where you keep track of your score in Seven Wonders, except that it doesn't need batteries. Cribbage, another, another another one of my favorite games, even though I am constantly just like, I'm bad at arithmetic. I'm yeah. only counting in twos. Uh, I'm I, only counting uh, in twos and I still can't figure out what seven and eight is. <laughs> uh, no, I know all the 15s. I got all the 15s down. It's the other ones that are. Yeah. Hi, kitty. All right, Catherine, it's time. Da-na-na, oops. I tweeted it, Trump. I didn't tweet it, Trump. That may have been premature, though, because I may have done something worse. Well, I can't. I can only <laughs> follow my uh, my programming. I tweeted at Ben Shapiro. I don't know who that is. He's like a right wing commentary who's awful. Cool. He said, I asked my four year old daughter this morning whether she thought it would be more fun to have a job or be a mommy. This is Mother's Day, by the way. She said, to be a mommy so I can cuddle my babies. Clearly, she has already been victimized by the patriarchy. Oh, <laughs> should I dr- should I should I run that back a little bit? You can bleep all those words. You don't need to know what I yep. what I said. You just need to know that I said it. So I tweeted at him and I said, I am also so tired of people saying things that they didn't actually say. Ugh. When other people say the things that they didn't say, that makes me so mad because the things they didn't say are so clearly irrational. How could anyone believe these things that no one believes? Like, the idea that, like, wanting to be a mom is being victimized by the patriarchy. Who the fuck said that? No. Maybe somebody. Maybe he found somebody who said that. And, like, don't interact with Ben Shapiro on Twitter, Hank. Luckily, he's not interacting with me back. Hooray. But John Podhertz, uh said, did you tell her her mother is a doctor? And this is when I felt like, suddenly, I was like, oh, Ben Shapiro's... Mm. Ben then replied... She is well aware, perhaps that affected her judgment. Wow. On Mother's Day, wow. Ben Shapiro like, said that. Insinuating that his wife is a bad mom because she's a doctor and she spends time on her Well, career. not only insinuate like saying Ben thinks that she's a bad mom, but saying that her, her daughter his, not- son, his, his daughter thinks that her mother's a bad mom and is frustrated that her mother has a job, like on Twitter, in public, on Mother's Day. 
And I was like, okay, bye. I. why bye. am I talking bye. to this clearly bye. very sad bye. man? Bye. bye, deleted, delete, delete that tweet, Hank, okay. delete this. Deleted. Delete this. Deleted. <laughs> just get I deleted it just now. We need to like, just, uh, we've just been like, you push the eject button <laughs> and you have ejected out of that whole realm. And also, do you follow that man on Twitter? No, some, okay, no everybody great. was retweeting it because they were retweet, re, they, okay. they, there was a meme going yeah. around and it was just like bringing more attention to it. But the meme was like, oh, well, I asked my four year old yeah. what the, they thought of the Supreme Court nomination of Neil Gorish and also about. Uh, their opinions of Chinese trade policy yeah, right. because it's not a thing that you're supposed to talk to four-year-olds about whether or not they... The, but anyway, I think that that's a bad idea to have that conversation with Ben Shapiro. I don't think that that helped. It just it just brought more people to his weird land yeah. where people are complaining about a thing that we're not complaining about. Motherhood is wonderful. Yeah. Mothers are great and it's not an invention of the patriarchy. Yeah, seriously. And like what liberal is like, I think we should just do away with moms. Let's just have all the kids be raised by the state. That's actually a thing that conservatives think we I'm think. Sh- I'm sure. I'm sure that, well, that's what they think welfare is or something. Yeah, well, we've destroyed the institution of the family by creating welfare oh, and right. and also by empowering women. Because if you if you didn't give women all this power, families would I stay wanna, intact. I don't want to go down this road anymore. I know all of these things, but like we don't need to talk about them on this podcast. Three hours ago, Lauren Duca tweeted Oof. this, which is very relevant to our conversation. I've been taking a semi-break from Twitter in the past few days and almost stopped feeling like my soul is being crushed in a vice several thousand feet below sea level. Mm-hmm. I also sort of did this, and I read that Ben Shapiro tweet as we were leaving the the house that we rented on Flathead Lake, and I was like, Ugh! "Here I am again. There ah! it is. There's that." And I was like, and then I thought about it for a long time. I was like, yeah. "I'm having thoughts about this tweet. Yeah, it really a lot got of you different riled thoughts up. about why it's such a good tweet and how it's getting him so much attention." And it has everything. It has yeah. all like it, it has, it, has it has eight different ways for us to argue over the tweet and without actually confronting the fact that he's not even create he's not even arguing with an actual position we have. It's, and it's every, like the so perfect springboard for everyone to go off on whatever like they want to go off yeah. on. Yeah. 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 My last tweet of today, Catherine. It's very sweet. I just am seeing it now. I <laughs> So my favorite thing about being a dad so far is watching my baby become a kid. Yeah, he is becoming a kid. And my second favorite thing is watching my wife become a mom. <laughs> I love Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Mm. Mwah. She's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted that one hour ago. I'm going to retweet it. <laughs> Just going to be like my, my one tweet of the week. Oh my sh- God, it's going to be my top tweet of the week. Oh. <gasps> It isn't yet, but it probably will be. So we're going to say that this is my top tweet of the week. Yeah. Because that other one about YouTube was a weird one to be top. <laughs> What's Catherine going to type? I don't know. I can't gonna, do it. Oh, going to quote it tweet it? No. It's just, add emojis. It's just going to be one of these ones. Where is it? This one. Oh, that one. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you are going to have to go see what Catherine tweeted, but don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just about it for Delete This this week, Catherine. Thank you for co-hosting with me. Are there any uh, segments we missed? Let's read an iTunes review, and then we will check out our viral moment of joy. <sighs> All right, this review was left on iTunes on May 8th by Shards of Stars. Please listen to these adorable nerds. I love this podcast so much. Hank and Catherine take me into their little world and treat me like a guest when I'm listening. They act like all my really fun married friends and make me laugh more than anything else I listen to. I love the references Hank makes to delete this in his podcast with John (laughs) and vice versa. It's such a fun listen. Yeah, it kind of helps if you listen to both of them. (laughs) It does. Also... Alex says, Catherine has made me terrified of Arby's. <laughs> you only have to be afraid of nihilist Arby's. Yeah, it's, people don't, I think, know about nihilist Regular Arby's. Regular Arby's is fine. I mean, unless you don't like beef, and then really right. shouldn't go there. We shouldn't like beef, but we do anyway. <laughs> yeah, nihilist Arby's is a, tw- is a Twitter account. Okay, Catherine found a viral moment of joy. It is a dog. It is a golden retriever. 
giving another golden retriever a pet on the head. And it's like, I did good. A sweet pet. It's I like, gave it I a sweet, it, sweet pet. I petted it. And did I do good? Am I a good dog? I am a good dog. Dogs have learned to pet other dogs. So I guess it's game over for humans. We had a good run, everyone. <laughs> yeah. What do they need us for anymore? Mm. Nope. And the dog is like, I did it. I did that. Yes. I did it. I did that. Yes. <laughs> that right. I did. Thank you, Zachary, for submitting that viral moment of joy. You can find the show notes at delete this pod on Twitter. And also use the hashtag Pipples. P-I-P-L-E-S if you ever want to get in touch with us. I'm Hank Green on Twitter. Catherine. Don't worry about it. The thank music is by Andrew Huang. And Catherine, thank you for coming and hanging out with me on Delete This. Oh my god, I can't believe we did it again. We did. It's 9.39, so disaster. Let's go to sleep immediately. No, I have to watch Untucked. Oh, she has to watch Untucked. I have uh, to clean the dishes. You oh, have no. to do the dishes. Oh, come on. So...